Ha! Welcome back, everybody. I've returned yet again. This is night... Uh, four? Three? We're gonna get ending number three tonight, so we'll be halfway done with the game. So, I'm just gonna jump into it because it's probably gonna take me a good five hours. So, uh, let's see what happens tonight on Reading Ego. Uh, uh, but how are you all doing, Mug Lord? My Mug Brother, aka Danger Zone 669. You got a gold star. Anytime anyone recites the Reading Ego theme song, you get a gold star. <laughs> so, um, I think I fixed, uh, just housekeeping, I think I fixed the issue with my alerts and my stream. So everything should be working good. Bitch here's follow, subs, posts, raids, it should all work. At least in a perfect world it should. Um, I tested it not, well I don't want to say extremely, but pretty thoroughly, so everything should be back to normal. Um, yeah, so we're about, after tonight, we'll be halfway done with the game. Um, I'm still pushing myself to try to get this done by Valentine's Day, so. Uh, depending on how quick I get the ending tonight, I may do a special stream tomorrow just to give myself a little, a little headroom, so that I don't do like a ginormous nine hour stream followed by another eight hour stream the following day back to back uh even for me that'd be rough <laughs> with the with the copious amounts of of sleep i've already lost just trying to beat this game in a week 100 percent run in a week um I, I wouldn't like to be in a world of hell come valentine's day and the day after so yeah okay let's jump in Okay, so tonight we get ending number three. Um, let's see, I just want to say ending number one was the, what I'm dubbing the Maho ending, where her and Moika uh, got attacked in a school. Ending number two was Mayuri and Kagari pretty much setting up stuff to go back in time to convince Owen Kiyoma to save the world, prevent World War III. So I don't know what we're going to get tonight, but, uh, you know, pretty, pretty unique endings. They're not like cookie cutter, slight differences. They're pretty major. Like a lot of things happened that I wasn't expecting. So this game is levy, uh, uh, excuse me, living up to its, um, its pedigree for storytelling. But let's jump right in. Okay, I'm going to skip some of this because world lines and time travel. We're going to get to the lab. Don't worry, I swear I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional. Okay, so I'm going to go slow and skip some dialogue. The phone call I need to answer should be somewhere around here. Okay. Second. Any minute now. Okay. Okay. Uh oh, here it comes. Not looking so good. Okay, bleeding. Go green. Okay. We saw this yesterday, so again, I'm just going to skip it. All right, should be around here.
to be it. All right, here we go. Waiting for a phone call any second. As I said. The phone I pressed against Kakari's head stopped ringing. And in that moment, the world, the world changed. Here we go. New world line. I was inside a deep black darkness. There was no sound, no temperature, just darkness, cold, and silence. No one was here. I didn't even know if I was asleep or awake. There was nothing but a vague sense of presence, nothingness, nothingness spreading out to infinity. What was I doing? Wasn't I? Hey, Okabe, if you keep lying there, you'll catch a cold. Huh? I turned towards the voice. Standing there, next to the open curtains of the development room, was... My waifu! What? Oh, there you are. Kurusu. Promised? Rina Scamento. Rina Cemento? I'll learn it later. What do you mean, there you are? I've been here the whole time. Have you? Yep, yesterday and the day before. I've been here a long time. It seemed that way, come to think of it. My head seemed like it was full of fuzz. But I wasn't sleepy or tired or anything like that. My mind was very awake. Something was missing, something important. Hey, where are Daru and Mayuri? Really okay? Did something happen to you? What do you mean? Ashida and Mayuri are right here. There, look! Huh? Oh, Karin! <clears throat> Sorry. My voice hasn't fully recovered from all the... All the hours of reading I've been doing. So I'm just trying to take it easy. Uh, how could you miss somebody as big as me, Okarin? That's right. Doru and Mayuri were always here, weren't they? No, it wasn't just them. Kiyoma, you doing okay, Nya? I'll use my kitty charms to make you feel better, Nya. So wait, this is the best timeline? Everyone's here. All the waifus are here. Kiyoma, if there's anything I can do to make you feel better, just tell me. And I'm going by Hoin Kiyoma, the agent of mad scientist, the mad scientist, chaos personified, Ferris and Luke Echo too, and... I'll make you a special cheese from the edible grasses I found in the area, Okabe Rintaro. I'm here too, Okabe. Uzuha, Moika. The lab members were in the lab like they always were. That's right. This was my daily life. This was how I spent every day. I'm even back to normal. Damn, best timeline. <laughs> it appears everyone has arrived. Therefore, we shall now begin the 65,536th round table. Are you ready? You're always so loud. Need to wipe that self-satisfied expression right off your face, assistant. Keep telling you I'm not your assistant. Okarin and Kurusu are always such good friends. You're the perfect couple. Now go explode. Wait, Hashida. I'm not in a relationship with this guy. They say the closer you are, the more you fight, nya. I'm jealous. Should join in the fun, U Ushirabara. 
What? I couldn't. I, I just couldn't. Fun. Stop wasting time, guys. We're starting the meeting. What are we talking about today? What else? Our topic for today is... What? Our topic... Today? Was wrong. Green? Everything seemed the same, but... Wrong, Okarin. Cold. Oma? Didn't feel it. Yoma. No emotions. Okapi from Taro. Oh no. No warmth. Kabe? Everyone was here. But it was cold and dark. Cold. Cold. Cold, 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 It was so cold, it felt like the marrow of my bones was going to freeze. My bones were made of ice. Like all the blood in my body had been replaced with mercury. Cold. It felt like I was going to freeze at any moment. What was this? Where was this place? Where was I? Where was I? What was I doing? Ah! I tried to speak, but the words didn't come out. It looked like I was lying on a bed. Very hard one at that. I slowly looked around. It wasn't the lab, and it wasn't my room. The room was old and gloomy. Of course, I'd never seen it before. What was I doing here? Ah! Terrible pain in my head like someone had jammed an electrode into my brain. I tried to raise my hand as I lay there, but it was too heavy. It was like all the joints in my body had frozen. Uh, uh. All my strength has slowly set up. Each time I moved a little, my muscles screamed and pain ran through my whole body. After several minutes, I finally succeeded in sitting on the edge of the bed and looking down. I realized I was wearing a white gown like hospital patients wear. Some kind of equipment on my head, and the cables coming out of it were connected to a strange machine. What had happened to me? Just a moment ago, I was... Right, Kagari. Those memories had been downloaded into Kagari's head. We tried to erase them by overriding them with Kagari's own memories. And then... That's right, I remembered now. The world line had shifted right after that. What happened then? I tried to remember, but it was like my mind was filled with fog. For now, I needed to figure out where I was. I took off the headgear and got out of bed. Ugh! It collapsed. This didn't make sense. Just dizzy after all that was going on in my head. I tried to stand up again. Ugh! I couldn't get any strength on my legs. I kept standing up and falling over, and in the end, I was only able to get up by grabbing the side of the bed. Uh, uh, standing on my own two feet be so exhausting. Was I sick with some terrible disease? Maybe I'd been in bed for several days. Somehow managed to drag my weak legs to the door. It was bizarrely heavy. It just seemed that way to me. It only opened after I put my full weight on it. The door was locked, but it seemed to be the kind that could be opened from the inside. Down the dark hallway, leaning up against the wall for support. At the end of the hall were stairs. I clung to the railing and slowly, slowly walked up them. At the end of the stairs, I found a hatch. Using the full strength of my back, I was just barely able to get it open. I had an old building. Walked down the crumbling hallway, still clueless as to what was going on, and finally found the door to the outside. Exhausted, I staggered outside. I saw. Oh, damn. <laughs> this ain't good. Mountains of shattered rubble. The heck? Rows of destroyed, abandoned buildings. Exposed, twisted steel girders. 
first I thought it was a movie set. It was all far too realistic for that. The walls, the windows, the ceilings, everything was destroyed. Little bits of rubble covered the ground. Cracks in the asphalt on the road, making it impossible to walk straight. Just directly in front of me. I spun around a full 360 degrees and saw the same scene everywhere. I smelled oil. Something burning. I looked up to the sky. It was dark and gloomy. I thought it might be cloudy, but something else seemed to be going on. I could see the hazy outline of the sun beyond the black curtain that covered the sky. <coughs> Violent pain in my throat made me cough. I quickly covered my mouth with the sleeve of my gown. My eyes stung. I tried once more to calm down and see if I could remember what happened, but I had no luck. For sure was that there had been a world line shift when I had deleted Kurosu's memories from inside Kagari. Memories held by Amadeus Kurosu. Memories implanted in Kagari. Anyone who ever owned them changed, that is. Overheld Kurosu's time machine theory, the world line changed with it. It was another altered world line. And what I was seeing was what looked like an ash covered stick poking out of the ground at the corner of my eye. I slowly moved to take a closer look. It was sticking out of the rubble, and at the tip, it split into five smaller branches. <laughs> it was a hand. It was a human hand that had been scorched pitch black. <laughs> Terrible feeling came rising out of my stomach. Suddenly, I thought I saw something move. Someone was there. Everywhere. I listened carefully to try and pick them out. Inside of that big building, I could hear some kind of sound from over there. Was someone there? If there was, maybe they could tell me what the hell was going on. I tried my best not to make any sound. I peeked through the walls of the crumbling building. Yeah. We're there, all right. There were people there. Lots of them. There weren't people anymore. They were just human shaped wads of meat piled up into a mountain. On top of the mountain was a pack of dogs. Something long and slick was hanging out of the dog's mouth. Destins. They were eating them. Eating the bodies. The stench was horrible. The sound of the flies was overwhelming. It was like something out of hell. I gazed with the vacant eyes of one of the bodies. One of its eyes fell out and the black insects crawled out of the empty socket. I ran away. I ran as fast as I could, trembling forward on falling legs. Somewhere. Is there somewhere around here that was sane? No matter how far I went, it was the same thing. Mountains of rubble. Rows of abandoned buildings. All I could see were the dead. No living humans. Then I found it. The rows of huge buildings which all looked as if they were about to fall over. The roads were full of cracks. There was a warped overpass sticking out of the ground. A few rows of iron and railroad ties. I knew this place. It was only a shadow of its former self, but I knew it. It's Akihabara. Which meant... What happened to the lab? Ayuri. It was Daru. It was Ferris. What about Lukako? Or Susuha? What happened to Maho and Kagari? As I ran toward the lab to find out... Steps behind me. Rough footsteps. Stopping over the rubble, more than one set. Louder and louder, and soon I saw them coming towards me from between the crumbling buildings. There were three of them, which had assault rifles in their hands. You! What are you doing there? They saw me. They all pointed their guns at me. Uh, there, was no so much, uh, there was so much I wanted to ask them. There were things I wanted to know. 
The only thought that came to me was that I needed to get away. Ha! Ah. And even as I tried to run, turn and run, my body refused to listen. Don't move! They must have sensed that I was about to flee because one of them yelled. Holes appeared in the concrete at my feet. It shot at me. They really shot at me. It shot at me with real guns. If I'd just been a little closer, they would have hit me. Uh, uh, I was too scared to stand. The men got closer, still holding the guns. Run. You have to run. It was like my body belonged to someone else. It wasn't listening to me. I kept getting closer. And then another sharp noise. One of the men collapsed to the side. He hit his head on the rubble and stopped moving. Huh? Huh? The other two waved their guns around, clearly confused as to what had just happened. You're in the way! He dragged me to the ground. Then more gunshots. The two of them fell backwards, still holding their weapon at almost the exact same time. died right in front of me someone had died i could do nothing more than sit there and watch as the silhouette moved in front of me to get killed I looked up the person i saw was susuha come on how long are you just gonna sit there kill them what kind of stupid question is that Cooler voice than I'd ever heard. You're Suzuha, right? Iron mask of an expression suddenly changed to surprise. But only for a moment. A second later, and the fierceness had returned. Who are you? Did you really not know who I am? The change in the world line mean that Suzuha and I had never met? Me, Okabe. Okabe Rentaro. Expression on her face changed again. Okabe Rintaro. That's impossible. Two pairs of icy footsteps sounded in the darkness. This way. After I'd given my name, Suzuha had stared at me suspiciously for a moment. Kind of call and told me to come with her. She made me wear a blindfold almost the entire time, though. No idea which way I'd gone or where I was. Stop. I did as she said. the knock, I finally realized we were in front of a door. Momo for you. Bakuyun Kyun. Come in. Evidently that was the password. I can only think of one man who chose such a stupid password. I heard the sound of a heavily locked door opening, and at last I saw a dimly lit room in the darkness. Was piled high with what looked like mechanical junk. Rows of instruments lined the walls. A man was sitting in front of them, looking straight at me. So glad you're finally awake, Okarin. What's this guy? How did he know my name? He's been in the mid 40s. He's a big, broad shouldered man with a stubbly face. There was a sharp but gentle light in his eyes. I felt like I'd seen him somewhere before. Uh, who are you? Oh, damn, it's Daru. Oh, jeez, did you forget about me? Even after all that's happened. That still hurts, Okarin. Damn, Daru. <laughs> Do you lift? The way he talked. That voice. There's only one person he could be. That was... Are you Daru? The man's face broke into a broad smile. Good. I did remember. I thought you'd forgotten. Daru, is it really you? Who else do you know that's as handsome as me? Right, Suzuha? Admit that if you lost a little weight. Say that. I lost a lot since I was younger. Indeed, the Daru in front of me was quite a bit slimmer than the Daru I knew. Wait, Dad, why are you talking funny? I don't usually talk like this, but I figured it would make good make things easier for Okarin. More pressing issue though was his age. 
was clearly a middle-aged man. The youngest I could possibly imagine him to be was in his early forties. I saw a shelf in the corner. I saw a man I didn't know reflected in its glass. There was another man like him, in his forties. He was staring at me with a gloomy, sunken face. I slowly raised my right hand, and the man raised his left as if copying me. Daru, tell me something. Anything you want, man. What year is it? Haha, <laughs> damn. Only I'd asked that last year. Daru's smile quickly became something more serious as he answered me. It's 2036. The world is at war. Oh, damn, I'm in the bad timeline. Daru gave me all the details. This really is the year 2036? Right. It's unbelievable. Doro's appearance had more than anything my own made it undeniable. 36. Who has said that World War III would start sometime in the next 10 years? 5.7 billion people would die. The population of Tokyo would drop to a tenth of what it once was. After that, the Third World War itself would end. The chaos would continue, and even in Japan, no, everywhere around the world, battles would continue. Is that what I just seen? I remember any of this. Memories were of 2011. The memories of the past 25 years. My last memory was the erasing of Kurusu's memories from Kagari's head. Suzuha told me that I would die in 2025. Why am I alive? That too, Dad. Suzuha chimed in. We're all told Uncle Okarin died 10 years ago. The hun leaned over him. What's going on, Dad? Did you lie to all of us? Calm down, Suzuha. I'll explain. Daru looked at me as if he was remembering old times, and then resumed his explanation. Okarin, you said you've only got memories up to halfway through January 2011, right? Yeah, the world line changed in January 2011. That's all I remember. I've gotten 25 years older without realizing it. The fact was starting to eat away at me. There's some problem with your body, or maybe you're just confused. You should have memories up to the end of January 2011. And why the end of the month? The end of the month when Mahotan saved your memory data. Who saved my memories? I guess you told Mahotan to take memory samples from you to help with the Amadeus research, right? Volunteered for Amadeus? I realized something incredible. It means that inside my brain. Yep, just like you guessed. Your memories are the ones that were digitized in 2011. Digitized. Memories. Inside my head? Wait, Dad, I don't understand. What's going on? How was Uncle Okarin alive anyway? Tell me he died in 2025, right? He did. For all intents and purposes, anyway. For all intents and purposes? When the race to make the time machine was at its peak, everybody in the world wanted the paper that Makasa Kurusu had written and her memories. But at the time, Stratford had everything that she'd left behind. Stratford. Even if they had it, they couldn't read it. They couldn't break the lock, you see. By the way, I was the one who built that lock in 2010. They decided to capture someone who knew her well and get information from them. It was me? They did everything they could think they could think of to try and get information about Makase Kurusu out of you. We rescued you. Your mind was shattered. You lost the ability to ever survive on your own. You were as good as dead, and there was no chance you'd get better. Then, his body was alive. That's right. Okurin himself had given me the idea. He was starting to get worried about how they were after him. They could have at least told me, right? You know what they say, right? To deceive your foes, first deceive your friends. But... The hus seemed a little depressed. It must have come as a shock that her dad didn't trust her. Be like that, Suzuha. Only a few people on Valkyrie knew about this. The name Valkyrie. 
So I talked about it a lot in 2010. It was the name of Daru and Suzuha's resistance organization. Let's move on. Green's mind was shattered and he was incapable of surviving. If we didn't do something, even his body would have died. People who knew the truth have been watching over him for years in another facility? 2025 to 2036. Seven years without letting anyone find out. Needed nutrients to keep your body alive. Since I was in bed the whole time, my joints would have gotten stiff and friction against the bed would have caused my skin to split open. Someone had watched over me the whole time to keep that from happening. Is that my Yuri? Not just my Yuri, she. Faristan, Lukashi, Mahotan too. You were alive? Yuri, Ferris, Lukako. And in this terrifying world, they were still alive, still looking after me. It had been for years. Hey, Daru. Why did I wake up now? Memories had been digitized in 2011. If they'd known these memories existed, they could have downloaded them into me a lot earlier, right? Easy to explain. Until just a little while ago, we didn't know where they were. Actually, Stratford had been holding on to you and Kurosu's memory data the entire time. We just didn't know where it was. I found it two weeks ago. Wanna guess where it was? It'll shock you. Where? Right next to us the whole time. It was at our college. Away, Tokyo Denki? They had a base in the basement. Not that there's much of anything left there now. Bradford had a base in the basement of Tokyo Denki? Two weeks ago, we managed to salvage your memory data, download it into your brain. The next ten days, I hadn't woken up. Just as they were about to give up, I'd finally awoken. After 25 years. 25 years. Oh, I stared at my hands. They were so thin I could almost see the bone. I could see veins popping out of them. The face reflected in the glass was unhealthy and wrinkled. My hair was starting to turn white too. But I woke up after 25 years. Just like Hiroshima Taro. And understand that it'll take you a while to process it. Of course it was a shock. The shocking thing was... Memories were once data, huh? Memories since I was a kid. My memories of that summer. My memories with Kurusu. All of them had been transferred into zeros and ones. Did you still say that I was a person? To be called human. But it's the same as Makaseshi's time leap technology, right? Went through that a bunch of times, didn't you? Right. I knew it in my head, it still felt strange. Cut off from 25 years of time. It had all been forgotten and left behind in a digital world. It felt like it had been stolen from me. I still can't accept this. Uh, don't say that, Suzuha. You're lucky, Dad. You managed to deceive the whole world that way. Didn't have a choice. Deceived, huh? Deceived, too. But I was fated to die in 2025. The beta world line that wouldn't change. No matter how it happened, I was alive right now. Even in the past, I'd been deceived by the future. It wasn't just me. Suzuha, and everyone else, the whole world had been deceived. The world was deceived. And there was a knock on the outside of the door. It was a visitor, it seemed. Suzuha got close to the door. Momo for you. Bakuyu Kuyun. After hearing the word, world's most ridiculous password, Suzuha knocked the door. It opened, and a young girl came in. Uncle Daru, big says Suzuha. Do do do. Kagari, I told you not to come here unless you had a reason. Kagari, this child was a young Kagari. Sorry, but mommy and everybody else left, and they hadn't come back. Now, now, don't get so mad. 
You're spoiling her again, Dad. You need to be strict at times like this. They interacted hadn't changed in 25 years. I ignored them and looked at Kagari. She seemed to notice me too. Hello. Hello. Who are you, mister? Me? Uh, I'm... I... I'm... I know. I'm a friend of your mother's. I hesitated for a moment. I decided not to give her my name. Friend of mommy, my Yuri's? Yeah, that's right. Huh? Your mommy nice? Yep. Do you like her? Yep, I love her. Let's see. I could see the love she felt for her mother radiating from her face. Mayuri must have raised her with a lot of love, too. I've been raised with everything Mayuri could give her. But after this, she was going to go to the past. She would be all alone in the past, separated from her beloved Mayuri. And they would catch her and use her as a test subject. Hey, Dad. Did you tell Big Sis Mayu that Uncle was up? Oh no! I forgot! I need to do that. I forgot what looked like a small wireless radio. This is Barrel Teeter. Come in. This is Barrel Teeter. This is Stardust Handshake. Over. The voice I heard from the speaker was definitely my Yuri's. I felt a lot calmer than I was used to, but it was definitely my Yuri. It was Stardust Handshake. Mommy! Oh, Kagari. You're with Uncle Daru? Yep. He's busy with some something important, so don't bug him too much, okay? Okay. Anyway, my Yushi, I've got special news for you. Special news? Yep. You ready for this? Okarin's awake. <gasps> really? Okarin's really? Wrong, Mayushi. Okarin. Okarin's. Did Okabe wake up? Really? Okarin's awake? Nya? I heard one voice I knew after another coming from the radio. The voices didn't seem to have changed all that much. So I want you three to come back right now. Uh, Mayushi, what's wrong? Mayushi. It's no good. She's crying too much to talk. Well, I can see why. She wanted Okarin back more than anyone. Yuri. Anyway, you should get back here as soon as possible. Got it. We'll come back as soon as we get provisions. Everyone else was overjoyed, but I saw that Suzuha's expression was clouded. Wrong, Suzuha. I was going out to get food. That wasn't planned for today. Huh? Sure it was. We got a message last night that it was today. No, it's a trap. Everyone, get back here now. <laughs> ah! A scream from the speaker cut her off. What's wrong? What happened? We're under attack. The enemy. Damn it. Mayuri, Ferris, run. I'll hold them off. But if we do that, meow. I'll be fine. Hurry. No! Luca! Luca, Nya! Dad! Right! Zuzuha started running and Daru followed after. Wait, Daru! Going too. But Okuri, in your condition. Let me go, please. He hesitated for a moment, then quickly nodded and offered me his shoulder. A little thinner than he when he was young, but his shoulder was still gigantic. I put my weight on it as we followed Suzuha. Finally got there, I saw several silhouettes. I've been mentally preparing myself for a fierce battle, but the whole place was dead quiet. There were several men dressed like soldiers lying on the ground nearby. In front of them was Suzuha. Kneeling next to her were two women. Their feet. Lukako, 
I could tell at a glance. The person lying there was Lukaku. Okurin? Two women looked up at me. Okurin. Lukanyan. Lukanyan is... My Yuri and Ferris both seemed beaten down by the passage of time. Ah, ah. Okabe. His features had grown more gallant, but his face was still soft and feminine. Wiggle looked at me with hazy eyes. Lukako. Is it really you, Okabe? Yeah, Lukako, it's me. You called me Lukaku. It really is you. <laughs> a single trail of blood dripped from Lukaku's mouth. His outfit was stained with blood over his right breast. The blood dripped over into the ground. I knew immediately that the wound was fatal. Glad what I just heard was true. Yes, thanks to you I was able to wake up. Thank you. Lukaku's hand reached up towards the sky as if he was looking for something. He couldn't even see me anymore. When I grabbed his hand, it was very cold. Okabe, is it? I did it. Yeah. Thanks to this ancient Zama school you taught me, I was able to protect Mayuri and everyone else. Yeah. I'm one of you guys now, right? I'm really one of you now, aren't I? Idiot, you always were one of us. Lukaku reached out a cold hand and touched my cheek. Smiled a dazzling smile. <laughs> that makes me happy. That's all he said. Then, the touch of my cheek disappeared. Lukaku, Lukaku! Luka? The cold hand fell to the rubble-covered ground. <laughs> Luke and Yan and never moved again. <laughs> Could this happen? Glad Lukaku always wanted to see Okarin. I'm glad he got to see him in the end. Glad? Glad? After this? Words made me realize how hellish the last 25 years I'd slept there must have been. Luka Ushira. Uh uh. Rushiabara. You fought splendidly. You saved us. Please, rest in peace. Just. it's not fair. <laughs> ah! Where's my Yushi? Cried herself out and went to sleep. I didn't understand that. She and Luca, she were good friends. Brother Luca? Luca Ko was dead. Died protecting my Yuri and Ferris. Damn. Uh, my mind is death overlapped with my Yuri's. Mayuri's hands got colder. So did Lukaku's. Same, no matter where I went. Yuri. Echo. Ursu. Everyone dies. A lot of people died after that war started. All of our friends from elementary school. All our friends from middle and high school. All our friends from college. Relatives, our teachers, people we knew, kids, adults, even the people we loved. So many people, so many people died. I knew this was coming. At least I thought I knew. If I didn't reach Stein's Gate, if I stayed in the Beta World Line, the world would eventually burn. I'd heard it a thousand times. I thought I knew what the future would be like. But in the end, it was just a story about the distant future. It didn't feel real at all. I could only imagine it. All I had were vague, unrealistic ideas. All the thousands of nightmares I'd experienced, I thought nothing could be worse than that. When 
I saw it with my own eyes, heard it with my own ears, and felt it with my own skin, I realized that everything I thought was wrong. Tales of bodies, wild dogs devouring human corpses, dead soldiers, the smell of burning flesh, the smell of rotting organs, the warmth of Munkako's blood in my hands, the warmth of Mayuri's blood. Warmth of Kurus's blood. But if nothing else, I'd managed to save my Yuri. Kurusu died. Turned my eyes away from reality. Told myself that at least I'd saved my Yuri and the others. But in the end, I hadn't saved anyone. And if I had, I'd only saved myself. The only person I'd managed to save. No one else. Urusu, Ayuri, Kagari, not Lukako, saved anyone. This Kurusu from the bonds of Amadeus. Huh? A message from you in the year 2025. Self? The path to Steins Gate is a hard one. Trying again once or twice probably won't get you there. I think starting there is the best way to get to it. I think that many futures are connected to the past. That's what you said eleven years ago. Kurusu? The world we're in isn't wasted. It's a world that we need. At least, that's what I think. Of course, that doesn't mean I'm okay with things as they are. Daru. Lokirin. When I go back and think about it, it's the moment where your memory's cut off. 2011? But that's not... See my aged body in the glass. And anyway, even if I did go back, what could I do? I can do it. I heard a voice I recognized from the radio. It's been a while, Okabe. Eleven years, I think. Maho? Look at the back of the room. As if he'd known what she was going to say, Daru had moved to a spot in the back of the room where the lights didn't reach. Suddenly it got brighter and I saw... A phone wave! I made this after hearing about it from you and Hashi to see. It's got a VR headset too. Got a lifter ready too. I thought this might happen. <laughs> went on to explain that for the last 11 years he'd maintained an environment where I could receive the time leap even in a coma. It sense. Even if I was in a coma, as long as they put up the receiver to my head, it would still function. Yuri and the others had taken care of my body since 2025. So Daru and Maho had known that this day would come 11 years ago? We had told them back in 2025. Our improvements mean that it's now possible to go back in time 336 hours. 336 hours? Two weeks? That'll only get you part of the way back. We made the modifications to the machine about 10 years ago. So beyond that, you'll only be able to go 48 hours at a time. In other words, if I wanted to go back to the end of January 2011, I'd need about... 3,000 time leaps. Jesus Christ! That's a lot. Reminds me of that. How it should have ended with uh, Harry Potter and Snape with the ring. <laughs> it's gonna be a long and painful journey. But if you're still up for it. Jesus, 3,000 time leaps? In a row. 3,000 time leaps. Is they really capable of something like that anymore? Get tired, you can rest part way. Daru. Don't worry, no matter what year it is, we'll always be with you. Maho. You know, I got a lot of regrets. Thanks to Amadeus, even after her death, a lot of people tried to use her for evil. For years. For decades. But I want your help too. Release her. Release Kurusu from that ugly spiral of greed. Save Kurusu. You're the only one who can. 
know if I could do it anymore. No guarantee that the path I was about to travel would ever lead to Steins Gate. And so... Maybe I should think it over. Again. What could I do? What should I do? Alright guys, I'm in. Okie dokie. As soon as the words were out of my mouth, he started getting ready. Okay, bay. Huh? Ever see Kurosu tell her that in the future, I beat her timely record seven times over. Got it. If I ever saw Kurosu. Okurin, oh, I'm all set. That was fast. I've always kept it maintained. Figured you would. Bed. The phone wave and the VR headset. It looked a little different than what I'd seen in the old lab. They were still our future gadgets. Oh, but are you sure you don't want to talk to Big Sis, Mayu, and the others? If I don't go now, I think my resolve is going to weaken. Even if I didn't see them now, I'll be able to see them whenever I want in the past. That's right. Garu smiled as I took the VR headset out of his hand and put it on my head. All right. See you two weeks ago. Yeah. See you two weeks ago. Hang in there. Then, I jumped back into the past once more. It took a long, long time. The journey was unimaginably long. Jesus! 3,000 time leaps! Uh. Uh. I looked at the phone I was holding in my hand. The date read January 31st, 2011. No doubt about it, I was back. I'd finally made it back. I'd gone back through so many years. I'd done thousands of time leaps. I'd gone through the war. I almost died. I thought of giving up a bunch of times. Each time I remembered it all. The ruined world. The piles of corpses. The screams. The shouting. The dripping blood. And Daru and Maho and how they'd set me off. After a long, long, unimaginably long time, I finally made it back to this time. Gooding? Did you get some bad news or something? Huh? You've been kind of spacing out since you picked up the phone. No, no, that's not it. That's not it. Yuri was here. Are you still thinking about New Year's? Meow, be. Ferris was here. Get a hold of yourself, man. Doru, Lukako, and Suzuha, and Maho and Kagari were here too. Feeling tired after what we did earlier? Earlier? You know, when we took the samples of your memories for Amadeus. Oh, right. Daru had mentioned that. He said it was at the end of January. No, that's... that's it. Just... you know. Hmm. Kagari. Hmm? What is it, Okiri? You still can't remember what happened since you came to this time. Uh, yeah. I see. Why do you ask? No reason, I just wanted to make sure. What? You're being weird, Okarin. That come from the future I knew. In this world line, Kurusu's memories no longer existed inside Kakari's head. But it doesn't really bother me anymore, though. I mean, Mommy's here, and Luke is here, and Big Sis Rumi is here, too. There's lots of food, too, so maybe I don't need to force myself to remember. I see. That was fine for now. The future was going to be filled with sorrow. For Mayuri. For Ferris. For Lukaku. For Daru. For Suzuha. For Kagari. And for Maho. Did he make the right choice when I decided to let Kurusu die? Everyone had left and I was alone. All the exhaustion came crashing down on me. 
I time leaped 3,000 times. I thought I'd be able to work things out of my head along the way, but I've been so desperate to return to the past that I hadn't had time. My mind was worn down after all the time leaps. I thought I'd made my decision, but I'd found myself wavering again and again. I'd only managed to do it by telling myself that I had to get back before I could make any decisions. But now my head just felt so tired. What should I do now? What should I do? Now, I didn't want to think about anything. But I felt too awake to even sleep. With everyone gone, the temperature of the lab quickly dropped. It was freezing. Nothing compared to the cold I'd felt before. The world I'd seen right after I erased Kurus's memories from Kagari. Sip was there. Yuri was there. Everyone was there. The scene from that very brief peace I'd had during that summer. That world had been so cold. Now I knew why. The world that I experienced when I was asleep, existing only as data. A world built only of zeros and ones. Like being alive even when you're dead. Being forced to stay alive even though you were dead. People I loved were there. There was no warmth. I could reach out and touch them. There wasn't even a little bit of warmth. Like floating in deep, dark space. Without any light at all. Sekurasu was now experiencing that too. Was all alone in a cold world without the slightest trace of warmth. I raised my hand up under the fluorescent light. I could see the veins rising up out of it and the red blood flowing in them. I was alive. There was warmth. I say that I was alive? That my memories had been digitized? After being exposed to this cold world, could I still really be called human? I heard a knock at the door and turned my eyes toward it. <laughs> Maho was standing there. Maho, I thought you went home. I forgot something. Forgot something. Anyway, what are you doing here all by yourself? Maho showed no signs of looking for whatever she had lost. Instead, she came right up and sat down in front of me. You've had that pensive look on your face for a long time now. Is something bothering you? Maybe she'd been worried enough to come back and check on me. I can't take Caruso's place, but I can still talk to you if you want. Oh. I don't need to worry about whether I could tell her or not. I needed her to make the time leap machine. For that, she needed to hear everything. Not exactly easy to believe, but will you listen to me anyway? Sheesh, what's your problem? The first thing she said after I'd finished. Just like the last time, it wasn't something that was easy for her to believe. Maho must have sent something in the way I spoke, because she listened until I finished. She interrupted me whenever there was something she didn't understand. She was especially interested in the time machine, the time leaps. I told her everything I knew about them. You believe me. I don't have a choice after seeing the look in your face and... seeing this, too. Mahu. That's her something I'd always wondered about. Urzu had died only a short while after coming to Akihabara. Would you really have gotten to know her in that short span of time? Especially knowing how she is, right? I thought something must have gone on for her to get so close to a boy that fast. Hehehe! <laughs>